Hello and welcome to our first design and technology online lesson. Uh, today's lesson we're going to be looking at papers and boards, okay, a key topic in design and technology uh, with a fo focus today on papers. Okay, so this is your first design and technology online lesson and today's lesson will be on papers and boards. Okay, so before we get started, um, I'd like you to have a go at today's do now activity. Okay, so three questions um, and I'd like teachers now to pause the video and then for you guys to have a go at the three questions. I think three questions, uh, three minutes. Um, so teachers want to pause the video now and then we'll go over the answers in a minute. Okay, so hopefully you've had a go at the do now questions uh, based on paper and I really wanted to get an idea uh, of what you already know about paper uh, before we get started. So question one was paper is made from what? Okay, so paper is made from trees um, and more specifically the wood pulp uh, that can be harvested from the trees. Okay, I think most of you would have got that. Um, number two, paper is used for, well, when you start thinking about it, paper is used for a lot of things. OK, many, many things, more things than uh, than you really think imaginable. OK, so it's used for for drawing. It's used for model making. It's used for newspapers, magazines and books. So lots of printed material um, are used using paper. Uh, other things slightly off then. So, so toilet roll, kitchen roll. Um, uses as a type of paper and then packaging. OK, so a lot of products out there are, are pay, packaged in paper. OK, and as we move away from plastic, um, more and more paper and card will be used um, in the future going forward for packaging. So I'm sure you've got lots of other ones, uh, but that's just a few uh, examples where paper is used in lots of different ways. And then number three, paper is all the same, true or false? Well, paper is not all the same, it's false, okay? It's probably true in a way that it's made in a sim very similar process, uh, but not all paper is the same, okay? There's different types, different thicknesses, um, and that leads us nicely into today's lesson, okay? So, okay then, so we're looking at paper. We're gonna look at where it comes from, um, and then the different types that are available to us as design and technology students. Um, we're also going to have a look at the range of sizes that are available for us to buy and purchase for us to use. Now, before we get started into that part of the lesson, I just thought it'd be nice to show you a clip um, looking at where paper comes from, how it's processed and how it goes from that tree and that wood pulp that we talked about in the do now question activity. Uh, to a finished piece of paper that we can work on and use. OK, I'm going to show you this clip, uh, so sit back, watch and take notes. Paper is an important part of our everyday lives. We use it for communicating, connecting and having fun with each other. But how is paper actually made? How do we turn wood into sheets of paper for our use? We plant over 150 million trees in our plantations every year before they're transported to our mills to be turned into paper. Paper making actually involves various processes to turn that wood log into our everyday paper products. However, there are three key steps to the process of paper making. One, pulping. Two, paper making. Three, finishing. To kickstart the pulping process, the logs are debarked. The bark has to be stripped from the logs since it cannot be used in paper making. The water used is filtered on the spot and reused for other logs, reducing the amount of water wastage. Together with other byproducts of the manufacturing process, they are used to generate electricity to power up the mills and nearby towns. The debark logs are then chipped into small pieces 
before undergoing a process called chemical pulping. This process breaks down a chemical called lignin. And the result is pulp. Pulp is like a thicker, less refined version of paper. After being meshed, screened and dried, they can be used to make high-volume commodity printing products like newsprint and magazine paper. But to be turned into paper, the pulp needs a little bit more work. It is pumped into a large paper-making machine, which stretches almost four times the length of an Olympic-sized swimming pool and stands as high as a three-storey building. Starting at the first section called the head box, the pulp mass is squirted through a horizontal slit over a moving wire mesh to remove excess water. Here, the fibres begin to spread out and take the form of a thin sheet, thus giving this part of the process its name, sheet formation. Moving at almost 90 kilometres an hour, the thin mats are fed into the press section where up to 50% of the water content is squeezed out. Up to 90% of water in this entire manufacturing process is also recycled. Things then start heating up as the sheets are dried at above 100 degrees Celsius over a series of cast iron cylinders. But the journey for premium quality paper doesn't end there. A film of chemicals is applied to the surface of the dried paper to improve the properties of the paper before being wound onto 8.5 metre wide jumbo reels. But of course, most of our printers can't print on paper of those dimensions, so the jumbo reels have to be cut up into smaller pieces. These smaller sheets of paper are then further processed before being wrapped and packed into our familiar Paper One packaging. Before being stacked into cartons and shipped worldwide, delivered to your doorstep, ready to be the launch pad of your next masterpiece. It's not something we can take for granted. Uh, taking it from a tree. Some drawer. Okay, you saw at the end there, there were huge rolls of paper um, that were being manufactured and then they were put down to uh, or cut down to different sizes um, for different uses. And that links nicely into this next part of this first lesson on papers. So paper then comes in different sizes. OK, um, it's not all just one size. It comes in different sizes and there's different sizes available to us. Now in the UK, um, most commonly we use something called the A sizes. OK, and paper is uh, bought and sold. Uh, usually in this form of A sizes. So how does this work then? So paper and board is available from sizes from A0, which is the biggest to A7 being the smallest. OK, so actually the lower the number, the bigger the paper size. And on this PowerPoint, you can see some of the example sizes of the A sizes available to us. Now you're probably most common uh, or most familiar with size A4. OK, that's what we use most commonly uh, in a lot of text exercise books uh, and paper that we buy from shops. But it gets big, bigger and smaller, so we can have A3, A2, all the way up to A1 and then up to A0. Um, and it gets smaller down to A5, A6 and then A7. A6 being roughly a postcard size, A7 may be the size of a business card. OK, um, and there's a rule really just to follow with the sizes. So each size is half the one before. OK, so for example, A4 is half the size of A3 and again, A3 is half the size of A2. So these si sizes aren't random. Uh, there's a pattern. Each size is half the one before. OK, so A2 is half the size of A1. Right, what I'd like to do then, folks, um, I'd like the teacher just to pause the, uh, the video just for two minutes. Um, two quick questions then. So, which is bigger, A2 or A5 paper? And then how many pieces of A3 paper could you fit into an A1 piece of paper? So teachers can pause the video, uh, give the students two minutes, 
um, and then we'll go over the answers in two minutes. Okay, so question number one then, which is bigger, A2 or A5 paper? Well, we should know that A2 is the bigger size of paper, okay? Remember, the A size is the smaller the A number, the bigger the paper. Um, and you also may have used that diagram to help you work out where A2 was and A5 and being able to compare the size of the two papers. And then question number two, how many pieces of A3 paper could you fit into an A1 piece of paper? OK, so a bit more tricky. Um, so let's have a look at this one. So the answer is four pieces. OK, you could fit four A3 pieces of paper into an A1 piece of paper. OK, good. So that's the A sizes. That's how we most commonly buy our paper and the rule is that each size is half the one before. So, for example, A4 is half the size of A3. OK, and let's move on to uh, the, the second and final part of today's lesson. So in design and technology, we need to know about the different types of paper that are available to us. Uh, and there are many, but there are five that we need to know about. OK, we need to know the name of it and we need to know the characteristics, the properties, what it's like, and then the different uses. What's that type of paper used for? So again, teachers, what I'd like you to do, could you pause the video? And students, what I'd like you to do, can you draw neatly out this table? And then we're gonna complete the table as we work out through what this video and PowerPoint. Okay, so if teachers can pause the video again. What I'd like students to do is copy out this table neatly into their books or onto paper. Um, and then in about two minutes, once you've managed to draw your table out, we're going to go through these types of paper that we need to know about in design and technology. five types of paper that we need to know about in design technology. Each one is different. Some have similarities, but each one's different and each one has different characteristics, properties and uses. So the first type of paper we're going to look at in today's lesson then is layout paper and layout paper looks a bit like this. Um, it's very, very similar to tracing paper. OK, it's clear and transparent um, and it's very lightweight and used by designers in the early stages of the design process. So this is what it looks like. So what are the characteristics and properties then for layout paper? So what I'd like you to do is complete your table, please, as we go through the PowerPoint slides. So layout paper then is very lightweight, thin white paper. OK, so it's semi-transparent. You can see through and you can trace over uh, initial ideas, you can trace over uh, source materials. Use for initial ideas. So designers will use layout paper in the early stages of the design process. OK, they'll use this paper when they're thinking about their first ideas for a design project. OK, it's very thin, it's very lightweight um, and it's something that will be used a lot in the early stages of a design project. Takes colour media well. OK, so you can use colour coloured uh, media well on this kind of paper. Um, no problem at all. And number four characteristic, it's very low cost. OK, layout paper is low cost paper, which is really important if designers are using it in the early stages of the project. Why? Well, the designs in the early stage of a project are likely to be uh, drawn, perhaps thrown out, amended, adjusted. OK, so lots of layout paper is used and it's low cost, which makes it ideal for those first and initial design ideas of a project. OK, let's have a look at paper number two then. One you're probably more familiar with is tracing paper. OK, so paper type number two in design technology is tracing paper. And it's one again that you're probably familiar with. Uh, you've probably used it in school already. You may have used it at home. But number two is tracing paper. 
So what are the characteristics? What are the properties of tracing paper? Well, again, similar to layout paper, it's thin and it's translucent. It's see-through paper, uh, more see-through than layout paper. Um, layout paper is semi-transparent, uh, semi-translucent, but tracing paper is translucent. It's see-through paper. OK, what is it used for? Well, I think you should know this. You've probably used it before to do this. It's used to make copies of drawings. OK, so you might use tracing paper to copy and trace over another drawing or something from a book. Um, and designers might use tracing paper to help again with their ideas and designs for a particular project. Now, the big difference between these two, then, uh, if you were to ask yourself, what's the difference between these two? Well, Unfortunately, tracing paper comes at a high cost. OK, tracing paper is a lot thicker, but it's more translucent and it's high cost. So it's perhaps not used initially in a design project and perhaps used further on uh, in the design process. OK, so tracing paper then is thin. It's translucent, which means it's see through. Uh, making it ideal to make copies of drawings or to trace over um, other objects or other drawings. And it's high cost. OK, so tracing paper is actually quite a high cost product. OK, if teachers want to pause this while students make their notes, you can do. And then we'll look at the next examples of paper. Paper type number three that we need to know about in design technology is cartridge paper. And cartridge paper will look something like this. OK, so cartridge paper, when you look at it, it's got a rough, it's got a textured surface. And the question is, well, what would you use cartridge paper for? What's it like? OK, so it's good quality white paper. So cartridge paper is generally known to be good quality. OK, it's thick. It's got a rough texture um, and it's good quality. It's available in different weights. Um, and we'll talk about this in further lessons, but weights also refers to different thicknesses. OK, so cartridge paper is available in different thicknesses or weights. Cartridge paper is ideal for general purpose work. And one particular example is it's very commonly used by artists and it's in sketchbooks. OK, so if you've ever done any, uh, if you've got sketchbooks or you've worked on cartridge paper doing art, um, it's very commonly used for those reasons. It can be used to make simple models. OK, so cartridge paper is slightly thicker than other papers, uh, making it really good and ideal for making simple models. OK, in the design process, once initial drawings and designs have been created, the next process is to start making models, models of your ideas. And cartridge paper is ideal um, for making these models. And it comes in a medium cost, um, again, depending on the thickness, uh, depending on the cost, but on the whole is a medium cost product, okay, which makes it absolutely ideal to make models, simple models, taking your ideas from paper, your drawings from paper, into a model. OK, paper type number four then that we need to know about in design technologies is called bleed proof paper. OK, probably not one that you've heard of before and probably not one that you've used before. But as you can see from the image, uh, the clue is there as to what uh, we use this particular paper for and what its special characteristics and properties are. So bleed proof paper is quite unique. It's quite different to the other paper types. Um, if you've ever used felt tip pens or marker pens on normal regular printer paper, you may have noticed something. And that is that the ink spreads, OK, or it might bleed through onto the other side of the paper. So when you're working in your books at school or working on paper at home, when you've used felt tip pens or marker pens, you might have noticed that it spreads on the page. OK, it's quite hard to keep it within the lines. And also when you turn the page, you might have noticed it bleeds through to the next page. And that's a problem for us as designers. So we created bleed proof paper, hence the name 
bleed proof paper. OK, so what's this bleed proof paper like? What's so special about it? OK, it's smooth and it's hard paper. And it's ideal to use with water based and spirit based felt tip pens and marker pens. OK, because this bleed proof paper, it stops the ink from uh, felt tip pens, and marker pens from spreading on the surface and it stops it from bleeding through to the other side of the paper. OK, so it's a very important, unique paper that if designers, when they get to their sort of final stages of the design process, maybe they need to present their final designs to a client, maybe they need to draw up their final design, they may choose to use marker pens or felt tip pens to give it a real rich, high quality colour finish. And the problem is, unless you ble use bleed proof paper, we talked about already, it spreads and it bleeds through. So bleed proof paper is brilliant. It's a great invention and it's ideal to use for final designs where marker pens and felt tip pens might be used because it stops it spreading and it stops it bleeding through. Um, and bleed proof paper comes at a medium cost, medium to high cost because of its special properties. Um, when creating designs using felt tip pens and marker pens. OK, teachers, you might want to just pause for a minute while students take these notes down. Okay, finally, then the last type of paper is called grid paper. So the last type of paper we need to know in design technology is grid paper. And grid paper is a group of papers um, that you may well be familiar with. OK, and there's some examples in this video on the PowerPoint slide now. So what's grid paper then? So grid paper is printed squares, isometric grids in different sizes. OK, so grid paper is grids, squares, isometric lines uh, that is printed onto paper in different sizes. OK, and you may be familiar with this. You may have used this in maths. You may have used this in some design activities you may have done. Uh, you may use graph paper in, in maths or science. Again, so this squared paper, this graph paper, these grids, this isometric paper, these are all classed as what we call grid paper. So it's printed lines, printed squares on paper ready for us to use. So what's special about that then? Well, it gives us a really good guide for quick sketches and working drawings. OK, and when you start to move into design and technology as a subject, you will use more and more of this paper to help you with your sketches, your design ideas and your working drawings, particularly using isometric paper. Um, which is really important and popular in design and technology. Uh, you may use grid paper in the form of squared paper for maths. You may use square paper um, in design, um, but these group of papers are classed as grid paper and used for quick sketches and working drawings. And the good news for grid paper is it comes in at relatively low cost. Considering it's got grids already printed on, it still comes in at relatively low cost, which makes it a great, a cheap uh, material paper for us to use in design and technology with our design ideas. We can use lots of it to create lots of different ideas and those lines and grids can help us provide a structure for our sketches and our design work. OK, and that's it for today then, folks. So thank you very much for joining. Um, that is today's lesson on paper. So we've looked at paper, where it comes from, how it's created. We've looked at the different sizes of paper and, and the patterns and how you can work out um, which size is bigger than which. And then finally, we've looked at the five types of paper that you need to know about in design and technology. We've looked at the five types. We've looked at what they look like. We've looked at the characteristics, properties and uses for each type. Right, thank you for joining me and I'll see you again in our next lesson in design and technology.